Today we'll be doing a review of the Sony X95J. We'll be evaluating it on our standardized test bench to see how it performs and if you should buy it. We bought and tested the 75 inch model, but it's also available in sizes from 65 to 85 inches. We expect these other sizes to perform very similarly, but the 65 inch has a different anti-reflective coating and stand position, but we'll talk about the impact of this at the relevant parts of the review. Let's start with the design. The stand has three different positions. One of them is as wide as the TV itself. In this wide configuration, it can also sit low or raised by about two inches to fit a soundbar underneath. On this 75 inch TV and on the 85 inch, there's also a narrower stand position to fit on smaller tables, but this isn't the case with the 65 inch size. The inputs are located on the left hand side and the standout here is HDMI 3 and 4, which are labeled 4K 120 Hz for higher bandwidth HDMI 2.1 support. Note that one of these HDMI 2.1 ports supports EARC for an audio return channel to play sound from the TV through an external soundbar or speakers. This means if you have a soundbar and use ARC, you're limited to only one high bandwidth HDMI 2.1 console or PC connection. The back of the TV has a standard 300 by 300 visa mount, and the TV is relatively thin, so it doesn't stick out much if wall mounted. The build quality of this TV is very good, with metal around the frame. The majority of the TV is textured plastic and feels well built. Now let's dive into the tests. A high native contrast results in improved picture quality in a dark room with deep dark scenes and this TV performs well with its VA type panel, so dark scenes are deep and detailed. It's a bit lower than most TVs with the same VA panel type, but this is pretty normal due to the viewing angle filter which we'll talk about later. Local dimming is a feature to further improve performance in dark rooms by dimming sections of the backlight. It's with this feature that the X95J really stands out. It has the best local dimming implementation we've seen, even compared to TVs with a higher zone count. This means that the contrast numbers don't really tell the whole story, as in real content, the effectiveness of local dimming means blooming isn't noticeable and dark scenes are deep without losing details. For watching TV in a bright room, high peak brightness is important for a clear image, even with lots of glare. This TV performs excellently as the whole screen can get bright and the local dimming allows highlights to be boosted in newer HDR or high dynamic range content. A good anti-reflective coating is also important for watching in a bright room. This TV performs excellently, so it's a good choice for a room with lots of light. The viewing angle layer does cause some horizontal smearing of bright lights, but it also reduces the overall intensity, so whether or not this is a bad thing depends on your personal preference. Note that the 65 inch model doesn't have the same layer, so we expect it to perform not as well, but still decent overall. If you've got a wide seating arrangement or like to watch sports with a group, then good viewing angles helps to ensure no one's left with a subpar image. The X95J has surprisingly fair viewing angles for a TV with a VA type panel due to Sony's X wide viewing angle layer. Off to the side, the image does look washed out a bit, but most people shouldn't have any issues. If you do want to watch sports or play video games, then a uniform image is important to avoid the appearance of clouding known as the dirty screen effect. This does vary between units, but we expect the 75 inch model we bought to be about typical. It's decent overall, but the edges do get a bit darker, which might bother some people. Now, a wide color gamma is important if you want to see vivid, saturated colors when watching high dynamic range content. This TV does perform a bit worse than other high-end models, so colors might not look as vibrant, but this is only really noticeable in a direct side-by-side -side comparison. So for most people, it's probably still a good result. Some TVs struggle to display smooth gradients, so distracting banding can be noticeable when playing games or watching movies if there's slight gradation, like in uniform skies or sunsets. This is one area that Sony TVs tend to stand out, and the X95J is no exception. The performance is really excellent, with very little noticeable banding. There's also a smooth gradation feature to further reduce banding in the source content and it works well. Overall, Sony TVs are generally well known for their processing features, so this is no surprise. If you want to watch fast paced content, such as when gaming on this TV, motion clarity is really important. A fast response time is essential for a clear image without too much distracting blur. This TV performs great, as you can see in our moving logo photo. 
There is a small blur trail visible on the left hand side of the logo, but it isn't very noticeable. You can clear this up by flickering the backlight with the black frame insertion feature, but it only works well with high frame rate 120Hz content. A low input lag is also important for a responsive feel when playing video games and like many new TVs, this one is excellent and feels very responsive, especially with high frame rate 120fps content. On both the PS5 and Xbox Series X, the high bandwidth 120Hz signals work well even up to 4K, thanks to the two high bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports. This allows for detailed and responsive gaming. Unlike the X85J, there aren't any issues reproducing a clear picture with these high bandwidth signals. This TV is also advertised to receive an update to support variable refresh rates for tear-free gaming, but don't hold your breath. People have been waiting over a year for promised support on last year's model. As a 2021 Sony TV, it runs on the Google TV smart platform. It's mostly a cosmetic upgrade over the previous Android TV interface, but it's still fairly easy to use and runs smoothly. Unfortunately, there are ads throughout the home screen with no option on the TV to disable them. The sound of this TV is decent and about typical of many TVs. It has a digital room correction feature that helps to tune the frequency response to best suit your room acoustics and produce clear sound, but it's limited overall by the lack of bass. This is pretty normal as TVs get thinner, so if this is something you care about, then an external soundbar or speakers is the way to go, and you can even use the Ray stand to put the soundbar right in front. So that brings us to the main question, should you buy this TV? Well, it's definitely a solid all-round performer with one of the best local dimming implementations we've seen. If you're a fan of Sony's processing and like the Android ecosystem, then go for it, you won't be disappointed. Another option is the QN98 QLED. It's a great choice if you prefer Samsung's Tizen smart platform, and it's also a slightly better pick for a bright room due to the mini LED backlight, which makes it one of the brightest TVs we've tested. On the other hand, if you've got a dark room or are after a home theater environment, then an OLED like the LG C1 is the way to go due to the perfectly deep blacks. If you want to stick to a Sony TV and you like their processing, then also check out the A80J, which is a great choice for a dark room.